Hiya, welcome back to the channel. Um, well, this video, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do something that I've been intending to do for a while. Um, it's not fixing anything or modifying anything, it's just demonstrating something. Um, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to attempt, I mean, when I say attempt, I've done this a few times before on all sorts of vehicles, but I'm going to attempt to drive the car without using the clutch pedal and demonstrate how to do that. So if your clutch fails, like the cable snaps, not the actual clutch fails. If you've no drive, then you, this ain't gonna work. Um, but say your clutch cable snaps, then you can get home by following this simple how-to guide. Um, I, I wanted to do this a while ago, but I couldn't do it because the start motor were too weak, uh, which I, I think I've rectified now. But we'll find out in a minute because I'm actually pointing up here, so if it's still weak, in fact, if it's not strong, it's not gonna work that well. Uh, but first, I need to think of a way to film this. Because usually when I film my speedo, if I'm doing like a comparison, I sort of have my phone filming it, and it's it's um, sort of stuck on my shoulder, uh, sort of hooked onto me, sort of in between my neck sort of thing. Uh, this isn't going to work um, doing that, so I'm going to have to do something else. So I've thought of, I've got this, which was provided by Craig from DHR Coaches a while ago, and it's served me very well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm gonna put it on here. And obviously that's not gonna stay there with my erotic driving, which is about to come. So a few cable ties, and I think I can make that so it's a, a functional tripod. Um, I'm gonna struggle to film that, so I'll just do that and then I'll show you when it's done. Yes. So now let's mount the telephone into the tripod and see what it actually films. Actually, that's probably not too bad if it stays there, which it probably won't. But let's try it. This is all going to be in the edit in this because I can't stop and start it when I'm driving either. Right, so I'm all going to demonstrate how to set off once because it is hard on the start and this is already a starter motor that has been, well, stripped down and fucked about with. And it's not got any new parts in it, so it's not the best. That's no clutch. First gear. Yes. Change gear, you simply just got to rev match. Now, the flywheel's on these engines quite heavy, so when you're changing up, the revs take a while to come down. So now, the second gear, which I want to be in the higher gear than that, doing 28 miles an hour. So just feel it in. Changing down gears is a bit harder, but it's a bit faster. Changing down gear, you've got to blip the throttle to match the revs up once again. You've got to match the revs the same way, but instead of waiting for the revs to drop down to match up, you've got to increase them. So if you just put your foot on the throttle a bit as you change it and just be quite fast, then use it. But sometimes you grind a few gears like. This is the main thing now, is when you're reporting a roundabout like now, you need to not want to stop. Every time you stop, you've got to use the starter motor, so the last thing you want to do is stop. Now this is going to be funny because I've got a queue of traffic I don't want to stop for. So I'll just... There's my way in here, just take the piss a little bit. Not have to stop. I don't know what else I can explain on this video now. And just sort of do some diagrams and shit, maybe, to explain why you've got a rev match. When you've got gears that are meshing, then when they're going at different speeds, you struggle to mesh them and you've got to get them to line up. That doesn't really explain anything, does it? Waste of time. Once again, now, I don't want to stop it. Wait for the lights to change it. I don't know how far up the road you can see because I can't see what I'm filming for. I'm going to stop here. So when you've got to stop, pull it out of gear. <coughs> Lights are going to change, so turn the engine off, put it back in gear. This 
it's not the most smooth driving experience, um, but I had a van once, it was really shit, and uh, the, the concentric was and failed on it, I couldn't bother changing it, so I drove it about a month like this, it's pretty good. Parking up's a bit of an asshole really, because you've got to use the, um, you've got to use the, the key switch as your accelerator, and sort of put it on bit by bit, you know, if you're doing a, a parallel park or something, you've got to remember to turn it all the way off, otherwise you'll end up crashing. You work it. So this is what I was trying to explain before with the uh, shaky camera when I was driving. Um, you've got inside your gearbox, this is a very simplified version, but you've got your input shaft, which is connected to your engine with a clutch here, so in between your engine. And you've got your output shaft, which is connected effectively to the wheels. Now this is a very simplified version, but what you've got is these, say on the output shaft and the input shaft, you've got gears. So, so this is a low ratio gear, this is a higher ratio gear, so, you know, big to small. Um, and when you change them gears, you move this slides side to side, which is your selector. So, for instance, I mean, like I said, this is a simplified version, it's not as simple as this, but this is your output shaft, these gears are on splines to the output shaft. Um, so, if you picture them being turning with the output shaft, now, this is your selector jog. This has synchro meshes on it, by the way, so when it slides to the gears, it sort of uses friction to drag them to the same speed, but it'll only work within reason. And then these teeth lock into the sides of the gears. Um, that is on splines to the input shaft. Um, and, I mean, so, just bear in mind, this is a simplified version in your mind. intermediate shafts and all sorts of gearboxes, but, and, and a lot more of these as well. But this, as it slides across, these are freewheeling on the shaft, these gears on the input shaft, and that locks into it to, to lock that gear. So it slides that way to lock that gear to the shaft, slides that way to lock that gear to the shaft, which then selects your gears. And that is a brief description, a bad description of how a gearbox works. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I just thought I'd mention as well, I've seen that this is a thing, so I'm gonna start getting on board with it, selling bath water. So if you want to buy some of your bath water, this is a, a tenner a jar, I'm going to frog it for. And uh, it'll be available once a year when I have a bath. Uh, but that, that's, from, that's from the other day. Anyway, that is all. That's all for this one. Don't forget to um, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual bullshit. I'll see you next time.